Hello guys, how are you doing today? And welcome to your ninth Blitz 3 tutorial, in which you're actually going to be going over even more collisions. I know, isn't that great, huh? But don't worry, these collisions are actually uh, what I would call practical, or that means pretty much that you'll be using them a lot when you actually try to code projects, or you know, try to make some cool stuff on your own, uh, because they are actually quite cool and uh, they're quite useful as well. And uh, yeah. That being said, let's go right into them and start exploring what these commands actually are. So the first command that I have is actually uh, the clear collisions command. And before, in the tutorial before, we had uh, we were experimenting with different types of collisions. And here I have the cube and the bottle defined, uh, but no collision defined. So let's just go ahead and define a collision between the two types um, of objects. Uh, one being the type underscore cube, whoops, the type underscore cube, and the other being the type underscore bottle. And uh, it's going to be a 2 2 collision, or it's going to be a ellipsoid to polygon collision and a uh, full sliding collision. Alright, so once again, let's go ahead uh, and return to the previous command, clear collisions. So all this cl uh, command really does is, uh, well, <laughs> kind of kind of assume from the name, uh, is the fact that it just clears the collisions that you have set up to that point. So here we've set this collision, this clear collisions command simply clears that, and uh, nothing is really active from that point. No collisions active. But let's go ahead and make this more interesting and plug this into an if statement. Let's say if key down 2, uh, the scan code 2 key, which is the one key on your keyboard, uh, if that key is pressed or held down, then uh, clear collisions. So then it'll clear the collision. So let's go ahead, hit F5, and run the program. Here we have everything that we need. And uh, as you can see, the collisions are not registered. Uh, let's go ahead and see why that is. Dun, dun, dun. Oh, okay. I screwed up the order. Okay, let's go. It's not type underscore cube. Un yeah, so first it's type underscore bottle. First the object that moves, and then the object that is static or does not move. There we go. Now that uh, I've corrected my noob bug, everything works fine. The collisions are registered well. And if we hold that one key, hold that one key, no collisions are registered. So the collisions are cleared. If we stop holding it, collisions are registered once again. There we go. Okay. So that was the first command that is quite cool. And uh, yeah, you'll definitely want to use this if, you know, you killed some, some enemy and you don't want the person to collide with the enemy anymore, the main character or the player, and, you know... There, there are really just a lot of uses. All right, now let's go ahead and uh, let's go to another use of this, of another command actually. Uh, and that command is going to be count collisions. And let's just go ahead and create an if statement out of this count collisions. Uh, and I will explain uh, the stuff after I actually type what I'm going to. After I actually type the code. So as you can see here, first let's just notice that you know we're not using a regular run-of-the-mill one-line if statement. We're using a multi-line if statement, meaning we have a lot of lines of code uh, in the if statement that are going to be executed. Uh, and the only reason, the only difference between those, you know, a, a single line if statement and a multi-line if statement is that it starts with an if here. Uh, and it ends with an end if. I mean, you don't see an end if in a single line if statement. You just have a then and then a command. Uh, and there are a few other differences, but I think I will go over those in another tutorial. For now, though, let's see. If count count collisions bottle, then what do we want to do? Well, this count collisions bottle thing, this this piece of code, it pretty much just counts the number of collisions or uh, that our bottle has at a particular moment, or the number of objects it's colliding with, pretty much. Uh, so if if count collisions bottle, if our bottle is colliding with at least one object, then we want to execute uh, this line of code. So let's do, go ahead and define a variable um, object that bottle collided with. Let's make it really long and descriptive. Yes. <laughs> collided with. Uh, and let's set that equal to collision entity uh, bottle comma one. All right, so all this really means is that we're fetching the object that is colliding with the bottle. 
Uh, this is the index of the collision. So pretty much, um, this is the first collision that this is the first object that our bottle collides with. So, and, and our bottle can be colliding with you know like four different objects at one time. But out of out of that list of of the objects that our bottle is colliding with, it only takes the first one or the first one that is is registered as a collision. That's all that pretty much means. Uh, and if there's only one object, there's really only one option for to return for this. So the collision entity bottle, there's only one object colliding with the bottle, just takes that and returns it into this variable. All right. So <clears throat> after that, what do we uh, want to do exactly? Well, all we would want to do in this case is um, just hide that object. Well, uh, this is uh, so I'm just kind of you know going along here. Let's just hide the object that bottle collided with. Let's just copy that. It's too tedious to type. Uh, and yeah, and this hide entity command, by the way, is another one that I wanted to go over with. All it does is it hides the object from our view so we can't see it, you know, kind of self-explanatory. Uh, and I think that is enough breakdown for now. And let's go ahead to this view here. And as soon as we collide with the cube, holy crap, it disappears. It's nowhere to be found. Awesome. That's it. Awesome. All right. So what else can we do? Well, uh, there's another command very similar to hide entity, uh, except it's actually the opposite of hide entity. It's, it's called show entity. All it does is it takes a hidden object and makes it visible. Yay! <laughs> um, so how would we actually use this practically? Well, let's say um, uh, if key down, if key down three, which is the two key on the keyboard, then let's show entity object that bottle collided with there. So I think that's that's pretty oh whoops. Whoa 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 whoa. Whoa hoss, slow down. It's right here. All right. So yeah, all we're really saying is that yeah when our two key on the keyboard is pressed, then we just want to show our object that the bottle collided with that we defined here by the way and we hit we uh, we hit it here uh, we would just want to show it now and make it visible in the view as the name may suggest. So what do we do? All we do, we collide. Oh my gosh, it disappears. Holy crap. Oh my god. We press that two key. Oh my god, it's a ghost cube. It appeared. And uh, yeah, we can just keep doing that all day. It's so entertaining. So entertaining. And uh, if we actually press the one key now, the object uh, collisions are not registered, and the, since the collision are, collisions aren't registered, the cube isn't going away because it's not counting a single collision for the bottle. However, if we stop pressing that one key, the collisions are active again, and it hides that object as soon as we collide with it because the count collisions method is counting a collision for the bottle. Yes, mind blowing, isn't it? All right, and uh, let's just go over another example of what we can do with our. Uh, with our count collisions command, instead of actually hiding our object, let's just say uh, we wanted to, you know, we wanted to change its color. So object that bottle collided with, let's go ahead and entity color that thing. Entity color object that the bottle collided with, and let's change it to uh, some blue. Yeah, some deep blue. <laughs> All right. As soon as we collide with it, bam! It, you know, it's, it turns completely blue and blends in with the damn background. Just so this tutorial can go. Absolutely uh, fine. Yes. Uh, all right. I don't, I don't really think there's there's any way to change that. Uh, at least at this point, well, I can kind of move the bottle here. When I disable collisions, I'm holding down the one key now and create some contrast. But uh, yeah, so there's just really a lot of options that you can do with this. Uh, yeah, that you can that you can you know you can definitely make some cool stuff with this. Uh, just play around with it. You know, see what you can do. But I uh, definitely find that these these commands that I've showed you guys are very useful in game programming. Uh, so I hope you've actually gotten something uh, something useful out of this. Uh, so thank you very much for watching this tutorial, uh, and peace.